Hi, this is Joel Persinger. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really deeply appreciate it. I want to go over with you very quickly the five reasons why I don't think you should register your AR-15. As you know, if you've watched the news, California recently passed a whole lot of anti-gun laws, and some of which particularly dealt with what California terms assault rifles. Now, uh, are these all really assault rifles? No, and that's a uh, subject for a different video. But you'll also discover if you live in some other states that other states have written similar laws and passed them. And so, as a result, one of the key questions I get almost on a daily basis and generally several times a day is, should I register my AR-15 or should I register my semi-automatic rifle? Well, my one word answer to that would be no. And there's a few reasons why. Now, before I get started, I should probably just confess and, and, and just clear up the fact that obviously the government knows I have an AR-15 because here it is and I've done videos with it and I've, you know, I've mentioned it many times uh, in videos. I've written blog articles about it, one that accompanies this video on our blog and so on. So the California government either knows I already own an AR-15 or they could easily find out by just going on YouTube or going on the web and searching my name and AR-15. So. People have said to me, well, the government already knows you got it. Why don't you register it? Well, there are some very good reasons why not, and I'm going to list five of them for you. Reason number one is a pretty simple one, and that is, why should I register the rifle when there are legal ways for me to avoid having to do so? Under California law, there are several ways I can avoid having to register my AR-15 or whatever rifle I may have that the state has determined is an assault rifle. Now, one way to do it, obviously, is take the rifle out of the state of California. But if I want to have it within the state, there are some other ways to keep from having to register it. My understanding is that the new changes to the law did nothing but augment the current law by adding bullet button equipped rifles like this one to the list of assault weapons. Everything else about what defines an assault weapon has apparently stayed the same. So in order for me to keep this rifle in the state of California and not have to register it, all I have to do is alter the rifle a little bit to make it quote unquote featureless because it is my understanding at least at this moment that a featureless rifle under California law does not constitute an assault weapon and does not need to be registered. So all I have to do is remove or change the offending features. So for example, on this rifle, I would have to remove the adjustable stock and put a straight stock on it. I would have to take off the flash hider and put a muzzle brake on it. And instead of the pistol grip, I'd put on a fin and you can buy them. They slide over the top and tighten down and just creates a fin that comes up to the stock so that I can't put my thumb around the grip. And once I can't put my thumb around the grip and I have a straight stock and no flash hider, this rifle then becomes featureless. So I don't have to register it. And additionally, as a featureless rifle, it doesn't require a bullet button, which means I can ditch the bullet button and put a standard mag release on it. And that in and of itself is an additional bonus. It makes it easy for me to take out of the state to go to classes or whatever. Yeah, I'll have a straight stock and no flash hider, but taking the fin off when I go to Arizona or whatever gives me back my pistol grip. And it's just a couple of screws and the thing pops right off. So it's a simple little bit of adjustment to make on my rifle so that I don't have to register it. And if I don't have to register it, why should I? All right, reason number two. First of all, if I register the firearm, all bets are off. The minute you register a gun that the government doesn't know you have, guess what? Now they know you have it. And it's very difficult for government thugs to take something away from you that they don't yet know you have. Now, in my case, they do know I have it. So, well, why not register it? Well, because if I register it, now my name and this rifle, along with its serial number and everything else, is now in a database. California immediately will consider this an assault weapon because it's registered as such, and the California law will immediately limit what I can do with it. All of a sudden, I won't be able to sell it in the state of California. I can't give it away to one of my children. I can't leave it to someone in my will, all because it's a registered assault weapon within the state. Well, that doesn't make any sense. If I can legally avoid registering it, why would I allow the state of California to put those kind of restrictions on me? There's no way. And as a result, even though they know I have it, I'll make it featureless. I'm not going to register it. Reason number three, what if I decide I wanna take my rifle out of the state of California? 
if I've registered it, then at some point or other, if California decides to ban them all together, I'm going to be sitting in my living room or maybe in an interview room at the local police station facing a whole lot of gun Nazis from the California government wanting me to tell them exactly where I took it and where it is. And I'm not willing to share that information. If I'm not in the database as having an assault weapon, chances are they're not going to be banging on my door. Particularly if you're unlike me. They know I have this one. Well, they may not know you have yours. And if that's the case, it might be better to keep it that way. Reason number four is not that different than reason number three. It's important to remember that the California government, the state government, is not the only government we need to worry about. If at some point the federal government decides to regulate AR-15s again, I would prefer that the California government be unable to provide the feds with a database that has my name in it and the particulars about my rifle. I already don't want California gun Nazis banging on my door. I surely don't want federal gun Nazis doing it. Reason number five involves my pocketbook. I don't want to pay the fee. California already taxes and fees me to death. Why would I be willing to pay an additional fee if I don't have to? And because there's legal ways to get out of it, I don't have to. Besides, I object to contributing to their uh, anti-gun agenda by giving them more money that they can use to restrict my Second Amendment rights. So I ain't paying it. Look, I cannot and I will not advise you to break the law. That said, there is no compelling reason that I can imagine for any government to register privately owned firearms unless they're planning to take them away. We know by watching Australia, England, and many other countries, we've seen this progression before, that registration is the precursor to confiscation. Why do you think the California government and other state governments want to know who has these things? Precisely so that they can show up at your door one day and confiscate them. Likewise, I have problems with legislators who pass laws that they themselves are exempt from, and that has happened in California. These California legislators pass laws all the time and then pass laws to exempt themselves from the laws that you and I are required to obey. Only tyrants do that. California is run by tyrants, and that is a fact. So, as long as there is a legal way to avoid registering a firearm of any kind, I'm going to urge everyone I run into to take that legal way and not register that gun. So I'm going to answer the question right here and right now, the question I get all the time. Joel, should I register my AR-15 or my AK-47 or my whatever it may be that might be considered an assault rifle because the law has changed? My one word answer is no. So there you have it. Thank you very much for watching my channel. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. There's a button right up here so that you can do that. And that way we'll let you know when new videos come out. Uh, we also got some buttons over here, if you like, that you can check out our Facebook page, our Twitter page, and the blog where I write some articles. I just wrote an article called The Five Reasons Why Not to Register Your AR-15 that goes along with this video. You might check it out, as well as a couple of other articles I've written just recently. Those are all on the blog. Likewise, if you haven't already joined the, the NRA and you like gun videos and you're not a member, you need to be. So I want to encourage you to join the National Rifle Association. They're fighting this battle countrywide. And right now, we're in a big battle for our Second Amendment rights, as we always are, but it's really pretty hot and heavy right now. And the NRA needs your help. So I'm going to put a link right here so that you can join the National Rifle Association. It'll cost you less than the cost of one box of ammunition to join the NRA for a year. I mean, that's the deal of the century. And if you click on this link, it'll save you a little money so that you can join for less. See, I got you a bargain. If you happen to have a gun, maybe it's one of these, or but don't tell anybody. <laughs> or maybe it's a handgun or whatever that you might use to defend your family or defend yourself, whether it's defense at home, or maybe you're like me and you carry a gun every day. You need some legal backup because so many states, including mine, will drag you through the ringer if you ever defend yourself, which is absurd but it is a fact of life. You're going to need some legal backup. I use a company called Second Call Defense. I've checked them all out, and it's the one that I found to be the best, and that's why we use it for our family. One of the things I like about them is the fact that they front money up front 
without having to wait for me to expend every dime I have and then reimbursing me. I can't afford to do that. I'm not an incredibly wealthy person. I don't want to have to sell my house and everything I own to defend myself only to hope that the insurance company uh, reimburses me later on. Second call defense does not work that way. They'll front money to bail you out of jail. They'll front money to defend you in court, with, whether it's a lawsuit or criminal accusations. And geez, if you have to defend yourself in your house, they'll even send you a little money to help clean up the disastrous mess. That's why we use them, and that's why I recommend them to you. Check them out, the link is right here, and uh, you'll learn a little bit more about them, and maybe it'll be something that you can use for your family. Thank you again for watching my videos. I really deeply appreciate it. Have a wonderful week. And please be safe.